Hello everybody and welcome back to the Bayonetta 2 walkthrough. It's time for Chapter 9, The Gates of Hell. And basically, what happens in this chapter is really what they should have just done in the last chapter. Like, seriously, they, they could have just cut out so much chaff. Because, like, I mean, that is the main thing that Bayonetta 2 does. It cuts out the chaff, and the really annoying and poor things from the original Bayonetta, like the instant death quick time events, which were the bane of, well, are the bane of pretty much anybody's existence who wants to try and get a pure platinum run. Or even a platinum run. And also makes it a lot easier to kind of figure out which multiple hymns you're missing, as well as Umbra and Tears of Blood, and all that jazz. And generally, sort of, kind of the on-ground levels and concept improvements are, like, amazing. And had the original game had these, it would just be kind of soaring high. Well, even higher than it already is for me. But then, as I've said before, I honestly feel that Bayonetta 2 kind of cuts too much and doesn't add enough. If you get what I mean. So, <clears throat> for example, even though it adds Umbra and Climax, that doesn't really do much. Like, it's cool looking and it's powerful and all, and it changes the way that you have to play because the entire game is focused around allowing you to use Umbra and Climax, and focusing on that more than Witch Time. But then, in the original game, there was something about that focus on Witch Time that just made you play better, I feel. So, like, the, <clears throat> the things that they added for Bayonetta 2 didn't necessarily make it grand. Like, I mean, the aerial battles and the underwater battles, although cool, kind of aren't maybe perhaps the best things in the world. Anyway, here we have Malicious. And basically, this is the demon version of Enrapture. Except it's a bird. <laughs> And, to be perfectly honest, it's just as easy to defeat. But it's actually one of the only... I think it's actually the only demon that is defeated by a kind of unique infernal demon that never gets used anywhere else. And I do mean that seriously, like, it just... it does not get used. And that is Carnage, which are kind of like little bug things, and they're, they're kind of, yeah, dragonflies. I think if you use Kafka, they do tend to turn up a bit more, but I'm pretty sure Malicious is the only Infernal Demon that gets Torture cla yeah, Climaxed. To death with it. Carnage deriving from the Latin word carn, which means flesh, and because they're dragonflies, they have a rich appetite, so they just kind of eat it. And it's terrifying. Now, at this point, we are beginning to enter into the Umbran resting places that are actually surprisingly challenging. Having said that, there aren't a whole many of them left in the game to go. There's maybe only one or two-ish more, maybe. Although I think this may be um, my first and only failure that you're going to see. Because I just 
fails completely and utterly. But basically, it's this one and there's one. Well, I think maybe th two more after this one. But the one that I'm explicitly thinking of that is the most difficult in the game is right at the end. And that is the only one that I would say is insanely challenging. Because this one isn't difficult, I just was a complete and utter klutz. And just... God knows what I was thinking at the time. <laughs> Uh, something else I should point out is that you've probably seen me using Punch Kick Punch to open all these chests, and really, Punch Kick Punch is the fastest way of getting out a Wicked Weave because it's only a, it's, a, it's a three hit combo. But what they did to it here is that they decreased the power from it, and for the most part. Wicked Weaves aren't the be-all and end-all in this game. In that, kind of, normal attacks tend to do the job just as well. And you don't have to always get to a Wicked Weave to actually, you know, deal massive damage, because they are generally weaker. Now, I think this is quite a challenging Muspelheim because they can be very aggressive, these enemies but also you've got to kind of defeat them which would be okay but then you've got to defeat a Greed as well which is basically why I resorted to using Torture Attack because it killed it instantly because like that can be so tight, because they don't really give you enough weak enemies to allow you to effectively deal with it. So you, you do have to be very on it for that Muspelheim. But having said that, it's still not one of the hardest. Those two are right near the end. Now, I believe... Yes, we just need to head through here. And we will continue onwards. Something I will also point out is that... You may have noticed that we don't have a full... Angelic Hymns Gold LP from the last chapter. The last part of it is in this chapter, which is the only instances... Well, the only instance of that ever happening in Bayonetta. Like, it's insane. And I'm not necessarily a fan of it. Because it kind of... It does just make the fact that chapter 8 and 9 are basically the same chapter all the more apparent. And the splitting doesn't quite work as well as I feel it should do. So we've got another one of these guys, they're still not that much of a pain and really you're probably seeing at this point why I think people do have a problem with Bayonetta 2 in that you are generally facing too many big enemies. Like there's not enough time spent dealing with lots of weak, well lots of weaklings which kind of makes you feel more powerful and also because you destroy them quicker it just I don't know it balances it out so that it's satisfying and then when you face a big enemy it's also satisfying but it, it's a dodgy balance and I don't think Bayonetta 2 gets it right
And to be fair, I think sort of... I mean, I feel really bad because I feel like I am being a bit, little, little bit moany. And nitpicky. But then, I guess I do just have to think, like... The reason that I'm being so nitpicky is because I really love this game and this franchise. Like, I absolutely adore it. It's an absolute joy to play, and there is kind of nothing out there quite like it. And really, what, what I want is, I want what's best for the game, and I want it to be the best it can possibly be. So when I see things where I'm just like, you could have done that a bit better, or you could have done that a bit better, it's a little bit depressing. Because it's just like, surely this is stuff that should have been spotted. I mean, some of it is kind of their choice, and it's what they wanted to do, so fair enough. I'm not going to kind of blame them for making those design decisions. I just think that in numerous cases don't quite work out as well as they should have done or could have done. And the plot is one of those. You're gonna see part of why I have a problem with the plot very soon. Very, 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 very soon indeed. <laughs> But you've already seen elements of why I have a problem with it, but even more so. I've shut off, Loki. I'm busy. Anyway, if you pop down here, you get the Harmonious Blacksmith, which allows us to get another weapon. Which I don't think I will ever really use. I think I'll ever so slightly show it off, but not particularly much. If you need to learn how to talk to a lady, ask your mum. Another LP. No rest for the wicked. Even if I am jollier than the average demon. But no need to pity me. I was bored anyways. Be right back. This one's gonna be fun. Been looking for a workout like this for a while. Ta-ta. So the wonderful classic music, cl well, classical piece of music you're listening to here is the Harmonious Blacksmith, which is the popular name of the final movement, air and variations of George Frederick Handel's Suite Number no 5 in E Major, HWV430 for Harpsichord. And it gives us Takem Mikazuchi. <laughs> Just a mouthful. I really do think that they're just just taking the Mickey <laughs> with some of these blooming weapons. Because it's just like, I'm not Japanese. Try my best, but I'm I'm not that good with doing these pronunciations. But basically, Takemikazuchi, it, it's a massive hammer. It's very deadly but very slow, and. It gets its name from the Japanese deity of swords, lightning, and the founder of sumo wrestling. Who basically unified Japan and stood victorious against the Kunitsukami. And in the Edo period after the 1855 Ansei earthquake, he appeared in artworks battling the giant mythical catfish said to be responsible for the earthquakes. And he's popularly depicted with a hammer which is where the hammer thing comes in. His names also play on the theming of demons empowering weapons in the series, as it can also mean brave, awful, possessing deity. And the kanji used in the name reads Martial Mortuary Urn Hammer. So, there's a lot going on with the hammer. 
with that, but I'm really not going to go anywhere near it. I think there was a moment where I attempted to use it very, very late on, but like Kafka, it's just not getting any use. Because, one, I don't know how to use it, at least how to use it effectively, but also, I'm just no good with it. <laughs> And so we get to face down Golem again. Still a pain. Still not necessarily a fan of him. But the cool thing that you could do with the original Golem is that you could tell how much damage you needed to get on him to kind of break him up here. You don't get that, which is annoying. But well, this is actually the penultimate verse of the chapter, so we're very nearly done, which is a godsend, but <clears throat> you may be wondering, that's a very long time frame left for penultimate verse. <laughs> It'll make sense, don't you worry. So, that right there. There's a wonderful summon for Hex and Hair. And you may recognize this climax attack. Although a slight variation in that we actually use it to effectively hit something rather than just dropping it and smashing it into smithereens. The got the hit the spike. It's beautiful. <laughs> But basically, the uh, Enochian, I believe, is Afayada Napta, which means Empty Sword of God. Or something to that effect. Focus on what I need to do here if I have to worry about you off on your own. Come now, Lydia. I'll take you to Thimblewinter after we finish my business. Yeah, great plan, love. You can't be on your own, so let's go into the depths of hell. Don't save your friend. I'm out of here. I said no. Yeah, people don't like that cutscene because, once again, it's kind of like Bayonetta can't be without Loki. I think it. Maybe not quite that, but. And two, get out of it, my way. It's a difficult cutscene, but awesome. it gets awesome now. <laughs> what? Who are you? You pretend to forget me. Yet even if your memory may now be lost, the remembrances of time exist forever. Am I wrong, human sage? Oh, wait. I'm the one you've been trying to kill this whole time? Umbra Witch. I am who you shall face. You will return what is rightfully mine. What I should never have lost. The eye. The eye. Child or not, you will see no mercy, sovereign one. The sins you have forgotten are timeless. Now, remember them as you stare upon my face. Sorry, mate. Nothing comes to mind. But now that I know that math of yours works, maybe you could jog my memory a bit. I 
And so we begin our fight against Prophet to the quite awesome Beyond Time. Now, <clears throat> this is quite a cool fight, I have to say, and thankfully Prophet is a lot easier to read than the Masked Lumen Sage ever was. And to be perfectly honest, I do prefer fighting him to the Lumen's Age because I don't know. I think it's because because he's easier to read, and even when he tries to interrupt a combo, it's very obvious that he's going to do it because he uses the massive telekinetic hand thingies to attack. Having said that, the problem that I have with this. And with Bayonetta 2 overall, is that this guy is our primary antagonist. And he's been kind of revealed, and we're fighting him, and it just. Yeah, it kind of takes away the surprise and the epicness. Because in the first game you had Boulder kind of mysterious voice in your head just saying the likes of like keep going my child for I am always watching over you and so on and so forth and it isn't until you get to him at chapter 16 that you actually see him for the first time find out who he is, and even though it's a kind of massive exposition dump and it's like 10 minutes long of cutscene before you fight, it's still kind of just like really epic and really well pulled off. And then you have an amazing fight, and then you go even further and kind of take on Jubileus, which is gold, essentially, although not THE god as it's now been revealed because there's the whole thing about Aesir. But, so, you had that whole thing and, like, you've never faced anything like Boulder before, and you've never faced anything like Jubileus before. Whereas, here, we've already seen the wonderfulness, in massive quotation marks, of our primary antagonist, and we've just faced him. And then we had a wonderful thing of we beat his ass, and then we had cutscene powers where it was all taken away from us, and our victory was completely screwed over. It's just why. Under a witch. Is that the limit of your power? Did you never open your eyes to your true potential? You are no left eye. But you may still forfeit it, like a lady. No lady would ever hand anything to a man who chases after little boys. Very well. If you will not listen, then you will see. See a power beyond time. What is the meaning of this? You said this was to stop the witch's rebellion. The Oba entered on the cost of Jubileus, the Oholo Horse. Found in Honda, Jizo, Elan, the Oba de Quaz, Oba de Panzizlas, Oba de Kiat, Page, Ipje, Olora. Enough of your empty words! Balder! This war is not your doing. No, it is not. I was deceived. Deceived by the light! Rosa, I'm so sorry. Please, please be still. I will save you. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
you gave me the symbol of our love your face will be the last thing I see thank you Rosa Rosa please don't speak I will save you it's still not too late Balder take care of Cereza watch over her See to it no harm comes to her. When the time comes, our dear sweet child will be the one. The one to awaken and inherit. Rosa. Rosa. No. Rosa! Rosa! vision of truth, a remembrance of time. Lies! You possess the left eye, do you not? You are an overseer. See the truth. See with the left eye of darkness. That was unexpected, but no bother. The return of the eyes is simply a matter of time. And with that, chapter 9 is over. I will go into more of the issues of that kind of <clears throat> whole set of cutscenes in chapter 10, but it's done now, and we're actually going to get to see Inferno, which is going to be amazing. <laughs> so excited!